Hey folk, welcome back to our channel, so in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto was founder of Chakra. This is part 1 and if you want more then please leave a like share and subscribe also don't forget to subscribe and check the author. Let's get in the video. Naruto was wandering around the forest having been kicked out of the orphanage. He rubbed his eyes of dry tears that were leaking from his face, why? Why was he treated in such a bad way? What did he ever do to deserve this? He asked Jiji why, but the man simply smiled and said things will get better. Yeah right. He walked and walked until he was far away from the village and sat down on the ground simply looking up at the sky. How he wished he was like a star, shining so brightly and being looked upon with happiness by others. Sometimes he wished he didn't have to feel anything at all. That would ease the pain and make things better. Yeah it'd be better if he didn't feel anything at all. Wiping his tears away he saw a light in the distance and wondered what it was. He walked over towards the light feeling drawn to it for some reason, he couldn't explain why though, but something told him to keep walking towards the light. When he arrived in the clearing he saw a giant tree that looked as though it could stretch for miles, its roots were big and there were many leaves around it. Naruto was so entranced by the tree as he watched it glow a pretty color, he approached the tree and hesitantly touched it. As soon as he did he could sense it was very much alive and thought he could sense a heartbeat coming from it too. He placed his ear on it and sure enough he did in fact hear a heartbeat from the tree and smiled for some reason, so warm he closed his eyes with a smile. There was a glowing light below him and he saw what looked to be fruits floating in the lake below him, the fruits were pink and in his opinion, looked to be flowers. One of the fruits glowed as it floated towards him, bending down he picked up the fruit with both hands staring at it as it was still glowing within his hands. There was a rustle from behind him as the leaves on the tree behind him spoke through a whisper in the wind. The Kuranomi Chakra Fruit. Naruto looked behind him as he heard those words, there was no doubt in his mind that the tree had just spoken to him its voice a mere whisper in his ears. He blinked, can I can I eat it? He asked. There was another rustle as the leaves moved once more as if telling him yes. Naruto with permission from the tree, he took a bite out of the chakra fruit, eating all of it without any hesitation in his decision. As soon as he swallowed it his forehead starting throbbing making him hold it in severe pain, but it soon died down much to his relief. Curious about what happened he walked over to the lake and noticed two things. One, his forehead had a blue eye on it similar to those of the Achiha clan, but was completely different. The eye had a blue sclery and eye rides, with a ripple pattern spreading over the eyeball and nine black tomo. Second his normal blue eyes were now different as well. His eyes were now purple with ripple patterns that spread over the eyeball. Naruto back away in complete surprise, what? Rinnegan, Sax Ra I, and, Rin Sharingan, Sax Ra Kapi We Lai. Naruto turned to look back the tree in awe, Rinnegan Rin Sharingan he closed his eyes trying to will his eyes to go back to normal. Opening them again he looked down at the water again and saw his normal blue eyes. With a smile he turned back to the tree, I'll come back tomorrow, okay. He felt a breeze hit his face and smiled. Guess that meant see you soon. The blonde walked away from the tree still smiling, he made his very first friend, even though it was a tree it didn't matter because it showed him kindness and that's all he wanted. He felt different now, no longer did he feel sadness or pain in fact he didn't feel any emotion at the moment. He was the one that wished not to feel anything anymore and he got what he wanted. In a way it wasn't so bad not feeling any emotions at the moment, he was still a child and needed more time to create his own persona as most children do when growing up. Walking through the clearing he was first at when he arrived in the forest he stood there and waited until the Anbu showed up and not so long after he thought that the man appeared before him. This was Anbu Dog, he'd seen this one before, this one accompanied the Hokage to he orphanage to come see him many times. If he was here that means the Hokage knows about him being thrown out of the orphanage and the woman would receive her punishment for doing such a thing. Tsuritobi was not happy, no he was not happy at all. Why wasn't he happy you asked? Very good question. The reason he wasn't happy right now is because the head matron of the orphanage kicked out Naruto in this freezing cold. So he fired her and the staff before sending them all off to Ibiki, maybe some time with the man in charge of the department will do them some good. He had sent his Anbu to go and look for the boy, hoping one of them would at least find him. He was brought out of his thoughts when a whirl of leaves appeared in his office, but that wasn't all. Dog came in with young Naruto in tow, holding the boy. Naruto. Saratobi smiled in relief as he took the boy from Anbu Dog, are you alright? Naruto gave the man a blank look, I'm fine. The man saw the expressionless look the boy was giving him and winced internally, well Naruto, you'll be happy to know that I have an apartment set up for you, so you don't have to worry about going back to the orphanage. That's good. The boy said not really caring. Saratobi was starting to get worried about the dull look the boy kept giving him and wondered what happened to make the boy this way. Naruto woke up staring at the ceiling of his new apartment complex, getting up from the bed he walked over to kitchen to make some breakfast. Luckily the man went to get some groceries for the blonde, giving the people in the store warning looks not to start anything while he was there. 
He also noticed that the old man said nothing about the eye in the center of his forehead, that was because the blonde had hid it from him. The white cloth he had around his forehead hid the fact that he had the Rin Sharingan. But now, there was no reason to hide it anymore. Besides he promised to go see the tree again today, and that's exactly what he was going to do. Having finished his breakfast he walked out of his new apartment closing the door behind him, he decided to walk around the village for a little while before meeting up with his friend whose name he still doesn't know. Jumping down from the railing he landed on his feet and walked away from his new apartment complex and decided to take his troll around the village simply because he felt like it. It didn't take long for the glares to be sent his way, but he ignored them in favor of feeling the nature all around him. Quite curious actually, now why was he feeling such a thing? It really was a curious thing indeed. He spotted a stand that had apples for sale, but the blonde didn't have the money to get any, so he decided to not try and get one and simply walked by. The man at the stand glared hatefully at him, but that soon went away when he saw what was in the middle of the boy's forehead. It looked like the Sharingan. But that was impossible. How the hell did the demon brat have the Sharingan? As Naruto walked around in complete ignorance he failed to notice the same reaction from the rest of the villagers. All of them saw what looked to be the Sharingan on the boy's forehead and believed he stole it from the great Ichiha clan. That was when the whispering began. How dare he? That eye belongs to the Ichiha clan. That little thief. The Ichiha clan needs to be informed about this. Naruto was none the wiser ignoring them as though they didn't exist and simply continued walking around and planned to keep doing that until he heard the voice of his friend. I am waiting for you. Where are you? Naruto looked up and smiled, I'm coming. He walked ahead on his way to see his friend. He didn't mean to wait so long, there was a chance he was quite lonely just like he was. He made a mental note to apologize to his friend as soon as he saw him. Question is, what should he get as a token of apology towards his friend? Hokage's office 9.30 a.m. Siratobi was currently in his office doing the bane of all the Hokage's headaches. Paperwork. Well yesterday was still fresh in his mind, especially with Naruto's emotionless response to the old man, he couldn't help but worry about what could have happened to the boy. He didn't get the chance to think about it much because an Anbu operative appeared beside him. Hokage-sama. Anbu Bor appeared. What is it, Bor? Siratobi was surprised the man appeared before him sounding so urgent as well. Sir. The civilians are demanding the execution of Naruto Uzumaki. Bor reported. What? Siratobi yelled in outrage. It seems as though they believe the boy to have stolen the Sharingan from one of the members of the Ichiha clan. Bor reported. What nonsense. Why do they believe such a thing? Siratobi yelled already standing to deal with whoever got any ideas of hurting the boy. They believe they saw something similar to the Sharingan embedded in the boy's forehead. Bor reported. Saratobi's eyes widened in remembrance to yesterday when the boy had a white cloth around his forehead. Was Naruto hiding it because he knew this would happen? Then why did he choose now to reveal it knowing the villagers would be angry? The villagers aside, there's no telling what the Ichiha clan would do when they hear of this. Saratobi thought. Sir? Where is Naruto now? Sir? Some villagers saw him walking away towards the woods on the outskirts of the village. Some angry villagers were seen following him but didn't get far when we intervened and stopped them. Anbu Wolf went after the boy. Bor reported. Good. I will be there to deal with the villagers myself. Let's go. Saratobi had a pissed off look on his face that made Bor shiver. Sir. And with that the two of them disappeared in a swirl of leaves heading towards their destination, neither of them noticing another shadow was within the office. This was not a normal shadow for it wore a black robe and a mask that said Naruto. I must report this to Danzo-sama. The man went back into the shadows disappearing without a trace. Naruto finally arrived and saw his friend, I'm sorry to be so late. I just felt like walking around for a little while. He walked closer to his friend who seemed to have accepted his apology, don't worry, I'll give you something in return. What would you like? He pressed his ear closer to the tree in order to hear his voice better. He didn't know when he suddenly referring to it as a he, but didn't see it as a bad thing. I do not know what I want. Does a human always need a want? Naruto blinked at the response, I don't know. But I know I wanted a friend and that's how I found you. I also didn't want to feel anymore. I think I got what I wanted from that too. Friend? I am your friend. Naruto smiled, mm. Tell me, what is a friend? The blonde thought about that question really hard and found an answer that was hopefully satisfying for both of them, a friend is someone you bond with, someone you can share everything with. I see then you and I are friends now. That means I can tell you my origin. I can tell you what I am. What you are. Yes. I do not have a name like you humans do, but I am known as the Shinju, God Tree. Shinju Naruto said the word. In the beginning, I was merely a seed that landed here on earth from a meteorite several millennia ago. I grew by absorbing the blood soaked into the land ground from countless battles that happened before you even born. Naruto nodded and listened not daring to interrupt. 
The humans believed I was a blessing that would help nourish the land when it was the complete opposite to what they believed. In truth, I was slowly killing the land and its people by draining the natural energy around them. Naruto looked sad in hearing that. I will not kill you my friend, nor will I kill the people that thrive here in the village. The blonde smiled hearing his friend say that and wanted to hear more of its origins. In the past humans saw me as a sacred pillar to be worshipped, believing me to be extended to the heavens and remained undecided about all conflict. Some believed that if I were to be approached by a human, they would be consumed by a demon spirit and would die like a withered branch. Naruto giggled, I'm not a withered branch, so they were wrong. Indeed. Every thousand years I produce fruit which is known as chakra fruit, which are never to be touched by humans. However since you are my friend I did not mind in you eating one. Naruto smiled in appreciation, thank you. You're welcome. There was a clan that would travel through dimensions in search of me, and they were the Lutsutsuki clan. They would travel in search of me for the sole purpose of consuming my fruits and gain chakra for themselves. One Lutsutsuki I remember is Kagai Lutsutsuki, after she ate one of my fruits she stayed here on earth so that she may rule over the human population. She wanted to rule us over. Naruto's eyes widened. Yes. She wanted to keep the peace, so she enslaved part of the human population using Mugen Tsukiyomi, Infinite Tsukiyomi. Mugen Tsukiyomi, Infinite Tsukiyomi. Naruto repeated. But is a Jinjutsu powerful enough to trap the entire world into an illusion, enslaving them into a dream so that their chakra may be drawn upon? Kagaya bounded those affected to me assimilating them with my life force and gradually turned them into something called White Zetsu. When her two sons, Hagoromo Tsutsuki and Hamura Tsutsuki, were born with chakra of their own, she merged me in order to take the chakra back, thus becoming a monster known as the Jibai. The battle between her and her sons ended as Hagoromo and Hamura, sealing the beast's chakra in Hagoromo's body, while using its husk as the core Rikidan Jibaku Tensei, Six Paths Jibaku Tensei, creating a celestial body that would become known as the Moon. Naruto's eyes widened as he looked up, you mean she's up there? Sealed away. She is. After her two sons sealed her away, Hamura became head of the Tsutsuki clan and departed to the moon to guard over the beast's remains, while Hagoromo remained on earth in order to spread chakra to humanity and teach them the concept of ninshk. Ninshk that's what ninjutsu's really called. Naruto questioned. Yes. Hagoromo Tsutsuki is also known as the Rikidan Senen, Sage of Six Paths, as he sealed the Jibai within himself, he became the first Jinchkriki as humans call them. Jinchkriki? Naruto questioned. It means power of human sacrifice. Well I find a word to be completely distasteful that is what they are called. Hagoromo also sought out peace which is why he was named the Rikidan Senen. He was also the one that created the Bij by using the creation of all things, dividing the Jibai's chakra into nine living entities. He gave each of them their own names. After his death they all drifted apart, he created them to make sure the Jibai would never be resurrected back into this world, but also to maintain and balance peace. So where are they now? Naruto asked. One of them is inside of you, my friend. The Kikbi is inside of you and is listening right now. Naruto froze in place then regained his senses, you mean this whole time the Yande Mhokage didn't kill it like we were led to believe. That's correct. He is sealed inside of you by the Yande Mhokage and he wants to see you now. I believe he wants to speak to you. Naruto nodded. Closing his eyes he imagined trying to meet the Kikbi, hearing the sound of water he opened his eyes and looked around trying to find the Kikbi. Where are you? Naruto called out. I'll tell you where to go, just follow my voice. Naruto didn't question and did what he was told and started walking ahead of him while at the same time looking around. This is what the inside of my mind looks like. It feels so lonely. Is the Kikbi lonely? Naruto wondered. It felt like forever until he finally arrived to his destination, before him was a giant orange fox with blood red eyes behind a cage that had a what looked like to be a piece of paper in the center of it. The Kikbi was just lying down staring at him and Naruto was doing the same thing as he approached the fox in complete awe rather than fear, wow he then frowned when he remembered what his friend said, he's not supposed to be locked up like this. Like some kind of animal. This is wrong. His mind made up he reached up to try and pull the seal off in order to free the Kikbi, but was surprised the Bij stopped him by grabbing the boy with one of his tails. Naruto gave the Kikbi a confused look, Kikbi-san. Don't get too ahead of yourself, brat. Well I would like nothing more than to be free it comes with a price and that's your death, eh? I'll die. Naruto was put back down on the ground as he stared up at that's right, if you were to release me right now you will die. So for now, don't try to mess with the seal. But why? It's not fair. My friend told me you and the rest of the Bij are supposed to bring peace, so why are you sealed inside me? Naruto was genuinely sad for the fox. Pick beside, have a seat. This is gonna be a long story and I want no interruptions. Naruto sat down cross-legged style intent on listening to every word with no intention of interrupting. 
you heard pretty much half the story from the god tree, I'm honestly surprised the damn tree is even still alive and hasn't withered away after all this time. Anyway, the old man created us so the Jbai wouldn't be resurrected, and like the tree said the old man wanted us to bring balance and peace, but that damn Hashirama Senju captured us all and handed us out like we were trophies, giving us no say in what we wanted. We were stripped of our free will. Kikpi growled. He then heard a sniffle making him look down at his holder and saw he was crying, why are you crying? Naruto wiped some of his tears away, B because it's sad you were all friends and you were forced to be separated from each other. That's why I'm crying. I'm sorry. The boy sniffled trying to stop his tears from falling, he felt something furry rub against his face, making look up at the fox who still looked surprised but didn't show it to the boy. Stop crying. You did nothing wrong, the fault lies with the idiot Hashirama Senju for imprisoning all of us to begin with, therefore you have no reason to apologize because you've done us no wrong. Understand. Kikbi lectured. Naruto nodded as he wiped the rest of his tears away, thank you, Kikbi-san. Kikbi smirked, being sealed inside you might not be so bad after all, do you have something to ask? Naruto smiled, Hagoromo Tsutsuki, what was he like? Was he nice? HMPH, the old man was as kind as they come. He loved his sons and us equally, and referred to all of us as his children, and said we were all siblings. The old man was something else. Kikbi reminisced. Naruto smiled as the Kikbi had happy memories of his father, maybe he couldn't free him now, but that wouldn't stop him from trying to do it again. He just had to wait until it was the right time. With his mind made up he stood up with a small smile, Kikbi-san, just you wait. I can't free you now, but I will soon. It's a promise. He held out his pinky finger waiting for the fox to do the same. Hirama smirked at the boy and held out his own pinky finger, you better not get yourself killed before that time comes, so you better train. Got it. Naruto nodded, promise. Hirama brought his arm back, get going, I sense an Achiha is approaching your location. Naruto's face became impassive, okay. The boy disappeared from his mindscape and woke up back in the real world. He was still sitting on his friend's route, Kikbi said a person from the Achiha clan is coming here. I see, so that's who I sense coming here. But he cannot enter here even if he tries, I created a powerful illusion that prevents even one from the Achiha to break. I see, by the way I think I've found a good name for you. Naruto said. Name? Yep. Naming Shinju sounds a little strange, so I decided to give you one. Naruto smiled. What name did you decide it to give me? Izuki. Izuki? Yeah, that's your new name. Do you like it? Naruto said. You're the first human to ever give me a god tree a name. I will treasure it. Naruto hopped off the route, I don't really want to meet in Ichiha right now. I'll see you tomorrow. Before you go, head towards an abandoned house that's on the other side of the village. There's something there you want to know, but I suggest you keep it to yourself. Everything there belongs to you, and only you. Naruto was confused but otherwise still nodded and walked away with the promise of coming back tomorrow and not making his new friend wait like he did today. The little blonde boy headed to the other side of the village, unaware of the chaos that's happening just outside the forest, but that didn't matter to him right now, he needed to head to the house his friend told him about. Looking around he did indeed see an abandoned house and wondered how long it was here for. He walked right through the gates not noticing there were seals placed around the residence, set to activate under certain conditions. The little blonde looked around the place in curiosity, walking up to the door placing his hand on the knob a seal became visible and it activated allowing him inside. Closing the door behind him he noticed the place had collected some dust but that wasn't important right now. Looking around the residence he decided to walk upstairs in utter curiosity, wondering why he felt as though he belonged here. There was a door before him and he didn't hesitate to open it and walk inside the room he saw there was a crib that had some dust on it and wondered just whose house this was. As his eyes scanned the entire room they stopped at a picture frame, prompting him to walk towards it. He picked up the picture frame eyeing the man with blonde hair and blue eyes similar to his own and the woman next to him with long red hair and dark blue eyes. The blonde also noticed the woman's stomach was big and tried to remember what the woman at the orphanage said about babies and where they come from. According to her babies come from their mother's tummies meaning they're pregnant, so that means the woman in this picture is pregnant. But with who? And this man, he looks just like him. Naruto slowly put the picture down and saw a letter fall out from behind the picture frame. Picking it up he opened the letter and read it. I can't wait for our very first child to be born. We've already picked out a name for him and just knew in our hearts that it's the perfect name for him. The name we've given our child is Naruto it means Whirlpool, and I have to say the name fits seeing as how Kashina is from the Yuzumaki clan that once resided in Yuzushi Agakur. I hope we can give our son a happy childhood and all the love and care he deserves. I can't wait to see you. Naruto. Minato Namikaze. Naruto simply stared at the letter not really feeling any sort of emotion, not happiness, joy, sadness, or anger. He calmly set the letter down on the desk and looked around the room once more. His room. 
which means this crib belonged to him and that they were happy for him to be born and he also had a clan, the Uzumaki clan. Interesting. He picked up the picture frame and left his bedroom closing the door behind him, deciding to explore the house some more. Having seen what he wanted he headed downstairs towards what appeared to be a basement and saw some strange looking kunai that was next to a scroll, so he picked up the scroll and read its contents. Horation Kunai, Flying Thunder God Kunai, Naruto, when you become older I want to teach you the Horation, so I am leaving some notes here for you in case you want to learn how to use the technique earlier than planned. These Kunai are custom made that I created to utilize my space-time ninjutsu Horation. The handle serves as a marker for my teleportation ability, they are also heavier than the average Kunai. The prolongs also make them more deadly in a melee battle. It might prove to be difficult to the average shinobi, but there's no doubt in my mind that we'll be able to understand and use it. Here are the four techniques I wish to teach you step by step. I Horatio no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God Jutsu allows you to teleport yourself to a previous marked location. To activate this technique, you need to place a special sealer technique formula to mark an intended destination. After this is done, you can enter a dimensional void at will instantaneously transports them to a location of the seal. The mark can apply to any area through brief physical contact, including if you come across an opponent or other surrounding feature. You can also teleport objects or people, but depending on the size it will require you to use up a lot of chakra. Also, the marking formula never disappears from a marked target. Do dot Horation. Rai, Flying Thunder God. Teleportation Barrier This is a barrier technique that uses the Horation formula to create a barrier space capable of warping away anything which comes into contact with. Hand Signs. Snake Horse Rat Ram Technique Specific Hand Seal. Bree. Horation I know Dan, Flying Thunder God Technique Level 2 This is a technique I recently developed which I hope you'll utilize in the near future. To use this technique, you must first throw a Flying Thunder God Kunai at your opponent, once it's reached a close proximity of the target or past them you will then teleport to said Kunai, immediacy attacking the target from their blind spot. IV. Race and Sankum CHM Rinbikm Sanshiki, Spiraling Flash Super Round Dance Howl Style 3 This is another technique I've recently developed that might be a little tricky for you to use, but I know you can do it. This technique involves the use of 6 Horatian Kunai by throwing all 6 behind the enemy teleporting to them. How you use it is up to you. Naruto couldn't help but think of the absurdity of the last name of the technique involving the Horatian. Race and Sankum CHM Rinbikm Sanshiki. What a weird thing to name it. The blonde kept reading the scroll, and his eyes landed on another technique. The Sengen, Spiraling Sphere This is a technique of my own creation that involves chakra forming a spinning ball of chakra into the palm of your hands. I've spent three years creating this, this one does not require the use of hand signs, you just use your own chakra to perform this technique. Naruto had to admit his interest was now piqued in these techniques, and Kikbi did tell him to get stronger. He grabbed both the kunai and scroll, then saw another scroll with the words, Uzumaki clan Kenjutsu techniques written on it, and took that with him as well, and left the house without ever looking back. Naruto's apartment 11.02 a.m. Naruto looked at the stuff he gathered and decided it would be safe to hide them for now, there's no telling who would try to steal these from him. He hid them inside a bag he had stuffed his previous clothes in and put it back in place. He contemplated on what to do next when he had Ho's stomach rumbling, then realized he hadn't had lunch yet and decided to head out to eat, question is. Where to? Thinking about it he remembered a Raymond stand that smelled really good, so he opted to go there and eat he believed he had enough money for it. Grabbing his wallet he noticed that he did indeed have money and hoped it was enough for some Raymond. With that thought in mind he left his house once more and headed to the Raymond stand. Walking around he was letting his senses guide him to where the place was, five minutes later he arrived at his destination and walked through and was greeted by a man. Welcome to the Chiraku. Them smiled at the boy and noticed the third eye on his forehead and panicked, are you alright, do you want me to take you to the hospital? Naruto blinked at the man in utter surprise, then showed a small smile, I'm fine, mister. Oh, my name's Tucci. Tucci greeted. Tucci-san, I'm okay it doesn't hurt at all actually. Naruto smiled at the man as he sat down, can I eat here? Of course you can. You can come here as much as you'd like, in fact your first meal's on the house. Tucci smiled. Naruto was taken back once more, thank you. A.M. Here I come. A.M. came out from the back and smiled at the boy, what would you like to order? Naruto looked at the menu, Mizo pork, please. A.M. nodded, Mizo pork it is then. And with that she went behind the back again, while Tucci got to work on making the boy his meal. He was still worried about the eye on his forehead, but if he said he was okay, then he would believe it. Naruto looked around the place impressed by the way it looks and was eager to try some of their food, he didn't have to wait very long because the man placed the bowl before him quickly. He snapped his chopsticks apart and began to try a sample of the ramen noodles, only to stiffen place, making the man worry again, are you alright? 
The blonde's eyes sparkled as he stared at the food before him, this is really good. Gucci grinned with pride, glad you like it. Eat as much as you like. Thank you. Oh, my name is Naruto Uzumaki by the way. Naruto forgot to introduce himself. Nice to meet you Naruto. Aum smiled as she appeared again from behind the back, then noticed the noise outside, they're so noisy. Yeah, I wonder what's going on out there. Tuchi agreed with his daughter. Naruto didn't care about what was going on outside and instead focused on finishing his meal, and that's exactly what he did. So good, Saratobi had successfully calmed the civilians down with the help of Anbu Wolf, who told them that they were overreacting and that they shouldn't make such false accusations because it makes them look foolish. Some seemed to take his words to heart while other wanted to kill Naruto, still believing him to be the Kikbi incarnate. The old man looked over at Anbu Wolf who told the old man that no matter how hard he looked making the old man worry until he another Anbu operative informed him that Naruto was spotted at Ichiraku much to the old man's relief. He didn't waste any time heading over there and saw the boy had devoured 14 bowls before he thanked Tuchi and got up from his seat. When he turned around Saratobi did indeed see what looked to be the Sharingan embedded in the boy's forehead, but still different somehow, but he would need Fugaku to come see the boy to confirm it wait, that's a bad idea. Better let Itachi come see Naruto for himself. Naruto stared at the old man, is something wrong, Hokage-sama. Saratobi couldn't help but feel a little lonely at not hearing the boy call him Jiji like he did when he still lived at the orphanage. He wasn't changing right away, but the differences were visible if only a little bit. Nothing my boy, where are you headed off to? Saratobi smiled. Naruto turned away from him, I'm going home. I don't feel like walking around right now. I see. Do you want me to accompany you? The old man asked. Naruto shook his head, no, I can get there by myself now. The blonde walked away from the old man. Saratobi looked at his two Anbu, follow him, make sure he gets home safely. If there are any civilians trying to harm him in any way, take them down. The two Anbu men nodded their heads and jumped away to follow after the blonde boy. Saratobi was suddenly getting a strange feeling. A feeling that something else was coming, something that will ultimately change the world as they know it. Root base underground, Anzo was currently staring into nothingness, but that wasn't true at all, you see he was waiting for his operatives to report to him about the Kikbi Jinchiriki. He had successfully convinced the head matron of the orphanage to throw the boy out where he would capture and take control over him, so he could be the perfect weapon to use at his disposal. But of course Hiruzen got to him first firing the woman and the staff, while at the same time getting the boy set up in an apartment. You're always interfering Hiruzen. He sensed one of his root operatives land behind him, report. Sir. It would appear Naruto Uzumaki has acquired something similar to the Sharingan embedded in his forehead. The operative reported. Anzo turned around in interest, did anyone get a good look at it? No sir. He was interested now. A Sharingan embedded in the forehead, that was something he could use to get the position of Hokage, while at the same time getting to control the boy just like he wanted. Observe the Jinchuriki for now, we will wait to strike and take him as the ultimate weapon for the village. Danzo told him. Yes, Danzo-sama. The operative bowed once more before leaving the man alone to his thoughts. I will soon have you within my grasp Kikbi Jinchuriki. And this time, no one will interfere. Naruto looked out the window of his apartment, unaware his Rinchuringan was glowing blue a little bit, as if warning him that danger would soon be approaching. Naruto yawned as he woke up from having a strange dream. It was really strange, he felt like he was in someone else's body and even spoke differently from them too. He was staring into someone else's face, but he couldn't see him very well, but somewhere deep down he knew the person he was speaking to was someone precious to him. Shaking his head he got out of bed to make breakfast and head back out to see his friend again today. He was also thinking about doing some training while he was at it, but since he didn't know where to start he decided to ask his friend Hizuki for help. Having finished his food he grabbed his sack that held his father's kunai scroll and the Uzumaki sealing technique scroll and left his apartment complex. Naruto, walking around the village is dangerous right now. I'll give you directions to get to me another way. Dangerous. It would appear you walking around with your Rinchuringan present for all to see has caused quite an uproar from the rest of the humans living in your village. I wouldn't be surprised if the Ichiha clan got wind of it and are attempting to approach you about it. For now, it's best you avoid them and focus on your training. I see, Naruto rubbed the back of his head, I didn't even notice. It's fine if you didn't. Instead of going into the village to get to me I'll take you to a different route. Jump up to the roof of your apartment building. Naruto didn't question him and did just that, what next? You should be able to see the forest from where you are. Naruto narrowed his eyes and he did indeed see the forest, oh, I see it. Jump through the rooftops but be careful. The blonde nodded and began carefully jumping through rooftops making sure not fall and not worry Hazuki. Naruto was close enough to the forest and landed near it before walking in and heading straight to where his friend was. Arriving at his destination he smiled, I'm here. So I see. 
You seem to have brought something with you this time. Yeah, I know who my parents are now. Their names are Minato Namikas and Kashina Yuzumaki. The Yandame's my dad. Naruto told him calmly. You do not seem very pleased about knowing the identities of your birth parents. Naruto brought out the last of the stuff he gathered last night and looked at his friend, I thought I would too but I don't feel anything. I think it has something to do with me. What do you mean? Naruto grabbed his chest, when the mean lady kicked me out of the orphanage my chest hurt a lot. I didn't want to feel anything anymore because it hurt too much. I want to feel happy because I finally know who my parents are, but I want to feel angry at my dad for sealing Kikmi Sen inside of me. I see. I can't comprehend such an emotion for I am not even human, but I feel as though I want to comfort you. Naruto smiled, thanks. Maybe I do feel something because I brought the picture back from the house, so that means I'm happy, right? Possibly. Maybe soon you will regain the emotions you wished you no longer had. Perhaps someone within the village loves you deeply enough to help you with such a thing. You really think so? You really think there's someone in the village that really loves me? Naruto questioned. It's only a hypothesis but a hopeful one. Naruto felt something in his chest and gripped his shirt, I felt something what is it? I do not know what it is you're feeling, but it may possibly be the emotion known as hope. Hope Naruto muttered. What is it that you need help with? Naruto gave his friend a serious look, can you help me with my chakra? I can. Testing your chakra control is the first step, I will see if your chakra control is perfect or it needs work. Naruto nodded, okay. Okage's office 9.45 a.m. Saratobi just got finished dealing with the complaints from the villagers regarding Naruto. It seems what happened yesterday refuses to go away, some of them were still asking for his execution because they believed he stole something that belonged to the Ichiha clan. Speaking of the clan Fugaku came in and demanded to see if the boy had indeed stolen one of their Sharingan. He knew deep down Fugaku didn't believe it, but of course the Ichiha elders were breathing down his neck to demand Naruto be brought to them and confirm if he did indeed steal their clan's Kekai Genkai. The old man sighed, he saw what looked to be the Sharingan embedded in his forehead yesterday, but it was impossible because he'd actually seen the Sharingan from Itachi, and last time he checked those red eyes only had three Tomo and not nine, so maybe it was an advanced Sharingan. Not only that, but Naruto's Sharingan was blue and not red. He also wondered if Naruto himself was possible a distant relative of the Ichiha clan, but shook his head of that thought. Neither Kishina nor Minato had distant Ichiha blood in them, so it was impossible. If that was the case then how? The knock on his door interrupted him from his thoughts, enter. The door opened and in came Danzo Shimura his longtime friend and rival. But over the years he'd come to slowly lose his trust in the man and with good reason. He had to be on guard every time he saw the man whether it'd be in his office or during council meetings, what is it, Danzo? Danzo approached the desk, I was curious of the rumors going around the village that Arjun Chiriki has somehow acquired the Sharingan. I hear the villagers are asking for his execution for such a heinous crime. Saratobi eyed the man with suspicion, I've already taken care of them, and no, Naruto did not steal the Ichiha clan Sharingan. The villagers were just overreacting. I see, you know my offer still stands. Danzo reminded. As I told you the first time you proposed such a thing I will say it to you again. Naruto will not be joining your root program which I'm pretty sure I told you to get rid of the first time, and he never will. I want that boy to have a normal life. Saratobi stated. You and I both know the boy cannot have a normal life with a demon sealed within him, and the civilians won't allow him to have a normal life, either because they see him as evil personified. Don't you see Hiruzen? He can only benefit from Danzo was cut off. My answer will not change. Besides, Naruto will be enrolled in the academy when he turns six. Do you understand, Danzo? Hiruzen glared as if daring him to say something back. Danzo stared at him for a few minutes before resigning, I understand. The man turned his back and left the office, but Hiruzen knew Danzo all too well. There's no way he'd give up that easily, and that was a bad thing. He'd have to watch the man carefully. Danzo on the other hand knew Hiruzen would refuse to give the boy to him and decided to take him by force. There was no way he'd let the boy slip through his fingers, he would not let that kind of potential go to waste. The time for mercy is over. Report. He said to the rude agent that landed next to him. Sir. We've lost sighting of the Kikbi Jinchiriki when he went into the forest. The operative reported. Was there a sign of a Jinjutsu present? Danzo questioned. There was, but it was too powerful for us. We tried to dispel it, but we were not able to. The operative reported. Leave me. Understood. Danzo was deep thought, a Jinjutsu powerful enough that it cannot be dispelled so easily. Someone has infiltrated the village and is somehow training the Kikbi Jinchiriki. This person must be eliminated immediately. Naruto was sitting down on the ground Loda style concentrating on the leaf that was on his forehead. His third eye was closed, it amazed him that his third eye would open and close on its own. The leaf on his forehead was glowing blue, and it was steady too. You can stop now. 
It would appear you now have perfect chakra control compared to before. What do you mean? Naruto took the leaf off his forehead. Before I could sense your chakra control was less than perfect because you have so much of it. In terms of how much, I'd say Hokage level. I believe it has something to do with you being a member of the Uzumaki clan. They were born with large chakra reserves as well as longevity. Longevity? Naruto blinked in confusion. Longer lifespans than the average humans. The reason for this is because they were direct descendants of the Tsutsuki clan through a Suro Tsutsuki. The youngest son of Hagoromo Tsutsuki. They were all born with red hair, but you do not have that physical trait as you've inherited your looks from your father. The villagers don't see that. They give me those mean glares and whisper things behind my back every time, but unlike before I don't feel sad like I usually would. Naruto said. They are of no importance, right now you need to focus on your training. It's best to ignore them. Okay. Hey, I forgot to ask you before. But how old are you really? Naruto asked. How old? Naruto nodded, yeah. You were there to see the mean lady get sealed away forever, right? I will assume you mean Kagaya as the mean lady, and to answer your other question I am not the original Shinju. I am merely a new seed that was planted when Hashirama Senju founded this village, along with Madara Che. During the time when they were merely children I began to grow in the same way as my predecessor the original Shinju grew. I was curious to know more about humans, but they could never hear my voice, so I stopped trying to communicate with them. You are the very first human to actually hear me. That proves you are very special. Naruto looked up at the sky, I'm not special at all. I'm just me, Naruto Uzumaki. Yes you are. Naruto smiled, so, what's next for me to learn? Since you are of the Uzumaki clan it would be best if you learn their kenjutsu, for it is within your birthright. Naruto nodded and opened the scroll he found in his parents' house and opened it up reading the first page. Shishmfkin, four symbols seal a powerful sealing technique of the Uzumaki clan of Yuzushi Agakur. The sealing formula is used to seal any target into a human body or an object and is mainly used when a giant enemy or evil spirit needs to be sealed away. I wonder if that's the same seal that was used on me. Naruto thought as he kept on reading. Aki no fkin shiki, a trigram sealing style to use this technique the user must first summon a ceremonial throne and place the target on it. Shaikif Jin, dead demon consuming seal performing he hand signs correctly, the user's soul is partly separate from their body and suspended behind them. The soul of the Shinigami will appear behind the summoner as the Shinigami restrains their soul with its hair. The Shinigami wraps its left arm with prayer beads and chants until a curse seal appears on its arm. It then drives its arm into the summoner's soul, allowing the summoner to call upon the Shinigami to seal a target. Once the target soul has been grasped, the summoner can remove the target soul and seal it into their own body. When this is done, a mark appears which is the Haki no Fkin Shaiki, a trigram sealing style. The summoner has a few moments to say their piece allowing them to finish any lingering business they may have in the world of the living before the Shinigami their soul and the soul of the target. Ending their lives. The souls are then trapped inside the Shinigami's stomach for all eternity. Naruto found this sealing technique to be not so good, this one's really dangerous. Did my clan really create this? He shook his head as he read on. Uzumaki Kenjutsu, Uzumaki sealing technique This sealing technique requires the necessary hand signs, then the user places their hand on the ground as a formula appears below the target. Anything above the inscription is sealed within the formula. Naruto blinked, my clan's sealing techniques are really strong, aren't they? I've only seen the Shaikif Jin, dead demon consuming seal, be used. I know not of the others I'm afraid. I want to learn my clan's sealing techniques first, then learn the Horation. Naruto said. You might want to learn how to use the Rinnegan as well. Hopefully there should be something in one of the scrolls to teach you or you could ask the Kikbi. Naruto nodded his head, I wish you were here with me. I do not understand what you mean by that. I am here with you right now. No, Naruto shook his head, I mean it's too bad you can't grab my hand or eat or stare up at the sky to watch the pretty stars at night. The Shinju seemed to think about this very carefully. Technically he didn't require nourishment anymore, it didn't have to see the stars when it could feel them. But the thought of holding his friend's hand did interest it for some time now and wondered what it would feel like. I understand. I believe I may have the solution to that. Before Naruto could even ask what he meant by that the whole tree started glowing yellow, making the blonde look on in fascination. The glowing light lasted for a few more minutes, then stopped to surround one spot on the tree, and that was the middle. There was a glowing yellow ball that separated from the tree and hovered before him for a few minutes, Naruto could have sworn he saw what looked to be a body inside the thing. It slowly landed on the ground and the ball of light disappeared and in its place was a boy with pale skin with a delicate facial feature, extremely long grey hair that was tied in a high ponytail, with two long strands that went past his shoulders. His eyes were the same as those of the Haika clan, he was wearing a white and yellow kimono shirt with long sleeves that didn't cover his hands, long white pants with yellow stripes on the side of them, and was barefooted. 
Naruto stared at his friend before a small smile appeared, you're here. The Shinju observed its human form very carefully to see if it made any mistakes in its transformation, it appears I made no mistakes during the creation of my human form. He felt himself being hugged by Naruto and was surprised by the contact, Naruto. Naruto pulled back with a smile, sorry, I just felt the need to hug you, Hazuki. Hazuki blinked, then remembered the name Naruto gave him, that's right. My name is Hazuki now, I forgot that. It's fine. Let's train together, Hazuki. Naruto said. Hazuki nodded in agreement, yes. Naruto looked back down at the scroll right along with Hazuki, hey you're a boy, right? Hazuki nodded, I have the physical traits of a male, Naruto. You do not need to worry about that. Good. Naruto looked back down at the scroll in concentration, I'll try the Yuzumaki Kenjutsu, Yuzumaki sealing technique, what do you think? It's the best decision in my opinion, also you might need paper to practice the sealing formulas. Hazuki suggested. Oh, I forgot to bring some. Naruto said. Don't worry, Hazuki stood up and walked over to the tree, I will handle that. Touching the tree he created stacks of paper that his friend would need. Naruto took one and stared at the sealing formulas of the Uzumaki clan sealing technique and started writing some of them down. It was strange how easy this came to him, just looking at it the formula itself looked extremely difficult and would give anyone a headache who were trying to figure it out. Naruto was a determined little child who had no intention of giving up just because he couldn't understand something. He'd keep on trying until he eventually figure it out and smile with pride when he finally did. When it came to the Yuzumaki clan sealing techniques like this, it didn't seem to bother him all that much, and he was able to understand what was written down for the sealing techniques for his clan. It looks really confusing at first, but if I reread it and write it down like this, it seems easy to understand now. Naruto observed. Izuki nodded in agreement, in my opinion, I believe the reason you know this so well is because you and Yuzumaki. Maybe, Naruto kept on writing a few more formulas before he stopped and looked at his friend, what should I work on next? Combat training will do you some good as well. I will help you with your hand-to-hand -hand combat training. Hazuki suggested. Really thanks. Naruto said eagerly. Hazuki nodded, you're welcome, let's begin shall we? He stood back up. Naruto followed right after him and stood facing his friend, I'm ready. Hazuki nodded his head in understanding. You still can't get through to where the Jinchuriki is. Danzo eyed his operatives. No Danzo-sama, we are trying but for some reason no matter what we try we can't get through. One of the operatives told him. Danzo's eyes narrowed at the forest he was staring at. It didn't take long for him to get here because he had his operatives watch the boy closely. Since they couldn't get in the forest to capture him like he had planned he decided to come here himself and see if this Jinjutsu was as powerful as it seemed. Looks like it is. The Jinchuriki is in there along with whoever has snuck inside the village to train the boy in secret. This person must be eliminated now. Azuki decided to show Naruto its own version of the fighting style that consisted of hitting with your palms and blocking by redirecting their attacks and not getting hit by them effectively. It was similar to the Haika clan's Juken style, but different, their style attacks the Tenketsu and organs, while the style Hazuki was showing him was different. He had watched and observed the fighting style of both Hashirama Senju and Madara Echeha for years before their deaths and managed to come up with a fighting style that's perfect for his friend. This one would allow him to not only harm the person's organs, but also shatter their bones as a result. He sensed someone was trying to break through the Jinjutsu he placed around the forest, where he hid himself for years from the eyes of those who could easily sense him. I've felt this evil presence before. It must be that man the one they call Danzo Shimura. If he is here then that means he is after Naruto. I remember him having similar intentions toward someone else before Naruto was born, I wonder if that person was his mother. What's wrong? Naruto asked. Izuki didn't answer instead he activated his Byakugan near the area where he could sense Danzo and his minions that were trying to get to his friend for his evil purposes. Narrowing his eyes he whispered a familiar attack that originated from him, Tamagarashi no Hikatsu, all killing ash bones. Danzo and his troops were trying once again to break the Jinjutsu around the forest and attempt to capture the Jinchuriki, but that would soon stop when all of Danzo's troops were stabbed by what looked to be bones. Danzo's eyes widened, what? He watched as his troops turned to ash as soon as the bones stabbed them, what is this? Azuki deactivated his Byakugan, maybe this will hold him off for a while, Azuki? Naruto called out to his friend. Azuki shook his head, it's nothing. I sensed something vile and took care of it, that's all. Shall we continue? Yeah. For about two hours Azuki helped Naruto with his new Tojutsu style, and so far Naruto was taking to it quite well. The only thing Hazuki had to work with him on was his stance for certain moves, but so far his friend was doing really well, so that was good. Next they worked on some ninshk, Naruto decided to call it ninshk now out of respect for the Rikidum Senen. 
Azuki respected this and told Naruto that the man would probably appreciate the fact that he was showing respect to his teachings by saying its original name. When that was done they went to practicing the Horation, well Naruto did anyway, Hazuki simply watched as his friend tried to master the first level of Horation. He had some difficulty at first, but after a while he was finally starting to get it, which was a huge accomplishment for him in a way. Naruto fell to the ground on his back exhausted and sweating a little, I'm tired. Hazuki sat down next to him, you did very well. Your Tujutsu aside, you seem to be doing very well with the Horation so far. I'm sure your father would be impressed. Naruto showed no expression at the mention of his father. Don't get him wrong it's not like he hated the man, well, mostly because he didn't understand what hate meant anymore, but he had no interest in a man that wasn't even in this world anymore. He had nothing to prove to him or anyone else for that matter either, he was only interested in staying by his friend's side. Finding out you're the son of the Yandame Hokage would make any child happy and have stars in their eyes, but Naruto just calmly accepted it, but didn't hold any love for them, since he hadn't experienced the feeling himself. With a sigh he sat up, let's go eat. Where? Naruto smiled at him, I discovered a place with really good food. It's called Ichiraku Ramen, their ramen is the best. Izuki was curious about this Ichiraku Ramen place, I see. If you say it is good then I'm willing to try it for myself. Naruto stood up slowly and rubbed his stomach, I'm a little hungry now though. Izuki stood up and picked an apple from a nearby tree and gave it to Naruto who took it gratefully, thanks. He took a bite out of the apple, so good. You shouldn't talk with your mouth full. Hazuki reprimanded him gently. Naruto swallowed what he was eating, sorry. It's fine. I know a way to get there without us being bothered by the villagers or those of the Ichiha clan. Hazuki walked off with Naruto following right behind him. I've been meaning to ask you, but do you not like the Ichiha clan? Naruto questioned. It is not as though I dislike them, but I find them to be filled with nothing but hatred and greed. This generation of Sharingan users will be no different than when Madara was still alive. Hazuki stated. Naruto didn't quite understand what he meant by the Ichiha clan being filled with nothing but hatred and greed. Hatred he wondered if the glares the villagers give him falls into the category no, that he had the capacity to care anymore because he didn't. Taking another bite out of hit apple, he let his mind wander as his body instinctively followed his friend, probably to a different route, in order to get to Ichiraku Raymond more quickly when they arrived back in the village. Hizuki meanwhile was constantly checking to see if Danzo Shimura was still in the area after his display of power earlier. Truthfully he did that in order to get the man away from Naruto, and from what he senses it worked. His eyes and ears are the forest itself and so far he hadn't sensed the man anywhere. Looks like he gave up for now, but he will try again, and this time we won't be in the forest to hold him back. Then I have no choice. Hazuki narrowed his eyes, he will do anything to protect his friend. Even kill every single person in this village if it comes down to that. Seeing a sign that said Ichiraku Raymond, he grabbed his friend's hand and dragged him inside. He felt the eyes of the villagers on both him and Naruto, but they were mostly on Naruto, he could hear the faint whispers. He will deal with them soon enough. Welcome. Oh Naruto, nice to see you again. Who's your friend? Tuchi asked. Hazuki bowed respectfully, nice to meet you, my name is Hazuki Iltsutsuki. Thank you for allowing my friend to eat here at your establishment. Naruto wondered why he would pick Iltsutsuki as his last name, but decided to not to ask knowing his friend had a reason for using that name. Nice to meet you Hazuki, and there's no need to thank me. Naruto is welcome to eat here anytime he wants. Tuchi smiled, oh, but it's best to eat healthy every once in a while too. Hazuki believed that as well but here was a problem with that, and that was the fact that even if his friend went inside a produce store, they would attempt to throw him out because they truly believe him to be a demon instead of a human being. He wondered why Hagoromo wasted his time in protecting humanity at all. Are they even worth protecting? Worth saving? I will make sure Naruto eats healthy foods, namely vegetables that are good for his growing development. Hazuki stated. Naruto blanched at the thought of having to eat vegetables, but knew that Hazuki had already made up his mind on the matter. Good to know Naruto has someone looking out for him, you know for a kid you know some pretty big words. Tuchi complimented. I am advanced for my age. Hazuki played it off. Naruto sat down and ordered what he got the last time, and Hazuki ordered he won with vegetables. Naruto whispered in his friend's ear, hey Hazuki, why did you get the one with vegetables? Ah, it's because I need the required sustenance to grow up as you would call it. My body is now that of a normal human despite some modifications, meaning that I need large requirement of water and healthy foods to grow like I did in my original form. Hazuki explained. What happens when you're completely drained? Naruto questioned. Then I will simply head back to the forest and take some nourishment from the soil there to heal any critical injuries or restore my strength should I need to. Hazuki told him as their food arrived. Naruto understood and began eating his ramen, his friend was right though. 
the blonde didn't have to worry about Hazuki at all, since all he had to do was go to the forest heel if he had a serious injury or anything else that might happen to his friend. He wondered if he revealed what Hazuki really was to the Hokage would the old man believe him. Would he take Hazuki away from him? The very thought was enough to make the blonde feel sick to his stomach, and out of instinct, he grabbed Hazuki's hand making the boy tree look at him. He didn't want his new friend to go away. He won't let anyone harm Hazuki, it doesn't matter who they are. He vowed to protect Hazuki no matter what. The two boys went back to eating with only one of them noticing they were being watched by two individuals. Hazuki knew they were Ichiha, but they didn't feel hostile at all, but that wasn't saying much. The boy decided to ignore them until they tried to make a move towards Naruto. Itachi had been watching them ever since they walked into the eating establishment. His eyes were on Naruto though, he couldn't see if the rumor was true about him having what appeared to be the Sharingan embedded in his forehead. At first he thought it was another excuse the villagers made up to isolate a boy even further, but it caused so much commotion, and the fact that the Sandane didn't deny the possibility the boy could have it. For some reason it had bothered Itachi and not just him, Shisui was curious to know if it was true too, and came with his friend to confirm it. Itachi's father Fugaku told them both that the clan elders want the boy brought to them for inspection, but Itachi wasn't stupid, he knew what that meant. The elders were trying to take it, just like they tried to do with Kakashi when Ibito Ichiha gave him his eye. They only wanted the Sharingan and nothing more. So you think it's true? Shisui wondered. I'm not sure. That's why we're here to confirm. Itachi told him. I get it, I get it, Shisui told him, I'm just curious you know. If he really does have the Sharingan then the clan will either try to take the eye out of him or force him to join the clan. I don't want that for him. Neither do I Itachi agreed, they're moving. Shisui kept his eyes on them as the boys left the place, Naruto turned his head at the right time, showing them that he did indeed have what appeared to be the Sharingan embedded in his forehead, but it wasn't the normal red eye, black Tomo Sharingan oh no. It was the Rin Sharingan. Not only was it a different color, but it was glowing too. Itachi and Shisui nodded towards each other. We cannot let the members of our clan touch him, Shisui told Itachi with a serious expression, there's no telling what they'd make him do. We need to report this to the Hokage immediately. No, you go tell the Hokage. I'll make contact with Naruto-kun and the boy who's with him. Itachi said. Got it. Shisui disappeared via Shunshin leaving Itachi to make contact with the blonde. Unaware of what was happening Naruto and Hazuki decided to just walk around the village together, Hazuki saw the hatred in the villagers' eyes had intensified since they truly believed his friend had stolen a Sharingan from the Ichiha clan. Fools. His friend is no thief. And it wasn't the Sharingan it was the evolved form of both the Rinnegan and Sharingan. Rin Sharingan. He was on high alert watching them like hawks wanting to see what they'd do. Needless to say he wasn't disappointed, out of the corner of his eye he saw a villager pick up what looked to be a rock and threw it at his friend aiming right at his head. Before Hazuki could do anything Naruto acted first, grabbing the rock and crushing it like it was nothing. He noticed that the boy's Rin Sharingan was glowing the whole time as if sensing danger. Naruto looked at his friend as he stared at the palm of his hand, hey Hazuki. Don't worry about it, enhanced strength comes with eating the chakra fruit. So it's normal. Hazuki told him. Naruto blinked, I see. He walked off again missing the fact his friend activated his Byakugan, sending a silent threat towards the villagers, if they ever tried that again. The villagers themselves were filled with new fear seeing the demon crush a rock with his bare hands like it was nothing. They made a mental note to report this to the council. As if sensing what they were going to do Hazuki erased their memories of the moment. Kagaya had done something similar in the past when she first met her lover, and now here he was doing the same thing. However he was erasing their memories in order to protect Naruto, he didn't know why he had this instinct to protect the boy he just felt it was the right thing to do. Azuki sensed an Ichiha was near, grabbing Naruto's hand he dragged him towards the forest, not wanting to confront one. Azuki? Naruto gave his friend a worried look. An Ichiha. He's following us, we have to go back to the forest. Hazuki told him as he kept dragging his friend away from the village and towards the forest, but it was never meant to be as the Achiha wearing an Anbu uniform and mask landed before the two before they could even reach the forest. Hazuki stood before Naruto acting as a shield, cursed Achiha. The boy muttered as Byakugan active. Itachi's eyes widened as the boy said those words. The man already knew his clan was cursed and were acting like it, but he didn't expect this child to know, and those eyes as he Haika. Who are you? Are you of the Haika clan? Itachi questioned. I'm not. I'm of the Tsutsuki clan, and that's all you need to know. Why have you been following us, Ichiha? Hazuki questioned, his Byakugan still active. The Tsutsuki they really exist. Itachi thought in complete surprise, I am not your enemy. I simply came to ask Naruto Uzumaki some questions regarding his Rin Sharingan. Naruto narrowed his eyes, how do you know what it's called? He is of the Ichiha clan, and they possess the Sharingan however their Sharingan can evolve, so it's not surprising they have records about the Rin Sharingan. 
I won't let your clan have him. Hazuki declared. You misunderstand my intention, Hazuki-kun. I have no intention of allowing those of my clan to harm Naruto-kun, in fact we have decided to keep him safe from them for as long as we can. Itachi told him honestly. Who is included in this we you speak of? Hazuki demanded. Chisui Ichiha, my closest comrade. Itachi said. Hazuki could sense no ill will from the man and no malicious intent either. So he's sincere then, Hazuki relaxed, but still had his Byakugan active just in case. Unlike the rest of those of the Ichiha clan you seem to be sincere in your words and intentions. That's rare for the members of your clan. Hazuki stated. How is it that you know about the Ichiha curse? Itachi questioned. Before I tell you anything, it's best to get rid of some unwanted ears. Hazuki looked out of the corner of his eye and sensed two individuals watching them, there's no point in hiding. Reveal yourselves. The two individuals appeared from the bushes, revealing them to be wearing white robes. Itachi knew who they were immediately, it didn't take a genius not to know. Root agents. Naruto stayed behind me. Hazuki told him. Right. Naruto got behind his friend. Itachi stood in front of both kids, why are you here? Stand down Itachi Acha. We have orders to bring in both Naruto Uzumaki and the boy with him. The root agent on the left answered. Hand them over now. The one on the right ordered. Itachi was about to remove his mask to engage them both, but Hizuki walked past him, protect Naruto. I will handle them. He said. You cannot defeat us. Surrender yourself, now. The one on the left stated. Hizuki was already in front of the two agents much to their shock, as well as Itachi's, Haki KKSHM, a trigram's vacuum palm. Releasing a high-speed palm thrust he sent them both flying away from them and slamming into two trees with a loud crack. Their bodies lit down to the ground slowly and they didn't get back up again. Hizuki deactivated his Byakugan and turned towards them, follow us, Ichiha. He walked off to the spot where he and Naruto first met with the blonde following right behind him. Itachi followed without a word, but Deep was curious as to know how the boy knew of a Haika clan's technique if he wasn't a member of their clan, but decided to keep the question to himself as he followed them to a secret location. The two boys plus Itachi arrived at the very spot Naruto first met Hizuki in his tree form anyway. The two boys stood next to each other, speak Ichiha, what is it that you know about the Rin Sharingan? Itachi removed his mask so that they would feel more comfortable, the Rin Sharingan is known as AET Superscript 2, Kekame Ra, Bloodline Encompassing, an advanced branch jutsu. It is said to be far superior to Keke Genkai and Keke Tenta. This is the first I've seen someone with a bloodline such as this, he looked at Naruto, the only one confirmed to have such a thing was. Hagoro Moltsutsuki the Rikid Senen, correct? Hazuki said. Yes does this mean Itachi wondered. Hazuki walked over by Naruto covering his ears much to the blonde's confusion, Naruto is of the Uzumaki clan, thus making him a clan heir however that is not all. He might very well be the reincarnation of two individuals who have all but disappeared from history. Who do you mean? Itachi's eyes widened. Hazuki stared at the man, I sense two chakra signatures mixed in with his own. They are Hagoro Moltsutsuki and Asuro Tsutsuki, it hard for me to determine which chakra signature is the most dominate, so I have no choice but assume he has both. Itachi's activated his Sharingan and sure enough he saw it. That means Naruto is a very special child that may very well save this world and bring forth peace. His life will constantly be in danger. Itachi said. It is already in danger. The villagers will resort to killing him the first chance they get and when that day comes I will be the one to deliver their punishment. Hazuki said. You sound as though you were God passing righteous judgment on the wicked. Itachi said. Tell me something Ichiha have you heard of the Shinju? Hazuki questioned. Shinju? Itachi narrowed his eyes. Yes. It is a tree that produces chakra fruit every thousands of years, however the original one perished due to it becoming the Chikbai. However, before it disappeared completely it planted a small seed that grew over time and produced chakra fruit during the time of Hashirama Senju and Madara Ichiha, but neither sensed my presence, which is a good thing. Now here in this year Naruto was able to not only sense me but hear my voice. Hazuki explained. Itachi had never heard of this before, so chakra originally from the Shinju that produced chakra fruit wait a minute. Sensed your presence. You can't be Itachi stared at the boy. Correct. I am the Shinju, child of man. Hazuki revealed. Itachi got down on one leg and bowed before the boy, I apologize if you feel uncomfortable about this, but I feel this is necessary. Hazuki was honestly surprised when a member of the Ichiha clan started bowing to him. He had witnessed many Ichihas in the past, but this is the first time one had accepted the truth about things and even bowed respectfully towards him. This Ichiha was pure-hearted in every way. Raise your head Ichiha, there is no need to bow to me. I am but a simple tree that has grown tired of observing humans. Hazuki said. You've been watching over us? Itachi inquired. I have been watching humanity since Hashirama Senju and Madara Ichiha's era. 
I have been watching over Naruto since one of Hagoromo's creations was manipulated to fight once again by a rogue Ichiha, who claimed to be Madara Ichiha, however I find that claim hard to believe. Hazuki revealed. The Kikbi was being controlled by a rogue Ichiha. Itachi was taken back by the information. Yes, though I do not know of his identity it is quite obvious he despises the Ichiha clan and wants to see them disappear. Controlling the Kikbi has accomplished that goal. The boy said. I see. Itachi said. Another thing you should know. Naruto also possesses the Rinnegan. The Rinnegan Itachi stared at the blonde who just kept wondering why Hazuki had covered his ears. Correct. Once he has completed his clan sealing arts among other things, I will be teaching him how to use the Dinjutsu. His Rin Sharingan possesses the same qualities as your Sharingan, meaning he could learn Tsukiyomi if he so wishes, but I do not think he would. Hazuki said. I understand. Itachi agreed, telling Hokage-sama about the fact that Naruto has the Rinnegan might be bad, considering the dangers it will attract. It's best to keep this to myself, it's also best you keep what I am a secret as well. There is no need for the rest of the human race to know what I am. Only Naruto. Hazuki stated. I understand. Itachi said. Hazuki released his hands from Naruto's ears, allowing the blonde to hear again, what were you two talking about? Don't worry about it. Hazuki rubbed his friend's head making the boy pout. Itachi felt something watching the scene, it reminded him of his interaction with Sasuke maybe someday the two of them can become friends. But now, Hazuki. Now, you go back to training. We will watch you. Hazuki said. Okay. I was thinking about working more on the Horatian, what do you think? Naruto asked his friend. I believe that is a wise choice. Hazuki agreed. Naruto went off to the scrolls he had laying around on the ground of their hiding place and looked over the Horatian notes again. Horatian does he perhaps Itachi spoke carefully. Know who his parents are? Yes he does indeed know, but even Naruto understands that announcing his heritage would be a foolish thing to do. They underestimate him and that will be their downfall, not to mention a sign of arrogance. Hazuki stated bluntly without remorse. Itachi was inclined to agree, you mean the elders, correct? Particularly Danzo Shimura, he has tried once before to take Naruto away. Hazuki informed. What? Has he come here himself? Itachi asked with a worried tone. No he has not, the Jinjutsu I placed around the forest prevented him and those that follow him from getting inside the forest to try and take Naruto away. Hazuki informed. Itachi nodded in understanding. He had the same problems trying to dispel the Jinjutsu himself, but to no avail. So that's why the Shinju's Jinjutsu was far superior than any Ichiha has combined. I did it. Itachi looked back towards seeing him with a smile on his face, did the boy understand the Horatian no Jutsu? Izuki, Ichiha-san, I did it. Naruto told them as he walked over by them. Did you figure it out? Hazuki questioned. Naruto pointed towards the tree before them making them look towards it and noticed there was a mark on the tree that read S, Jutsu Shiki, on it. The blonde closed his eyes taking a deep breath, Horatian no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God technique. He muttered and disappeared in a yellow flash much to Itachi's astonishment, looking up he saw the blonde was standing on the marked spot of the tree, his feet were surrounded in blue chakra, see? I did it. Izuki smiled, yes you did, good work. Itachi was staring at the boy surprised by the fact he's able to transfer chakra to his feet with ease, how? When Naruto ate one of my chakra fruits his chakra control improved, not only that, but his chakra has increased, but just at the right amount. Hazuki explained. What do you mean? Itachi questioned. Exactly as I said. Hazuki responded. Naruto got down from the tree and marked Hazuki on his left hand, showing the Jutsu Shiki symbol on it, this way if we get separated I can get to you easily. Hazuki stared at the mark on his hand and thought, hmm, this is a smart strategy Naruto. This world is full of dangers and getting to each other quickly is important. Naruto nodded, then looked over at Itachi and bowed politely, thank you for listening to us, Ichiha-san. Itachi. My full name is Itachi Ichiha, but you may call me Itachi-san if you so wish. Itachi smiled at the boy. Naruto nodded, Itachi sen then. Let's continue training, Hazuki. Very well, Hazuki looked at the Ichiha male, will you stay as well? Itachi nodded, I will. The fact that Danzo was already making a move on the boy was a sign that Naruto needed 24-hour protection. This is Danzo we're talking about here so if anyone believes it to be too much then they're wrong. Okage's office 1.45 p.m. Hiruzen couldn't believe what he was hearing. Are, are you certain of this? Hiruzen questioned. Shisui nodded, no mistake, Hokage-sama. Naruto has somehow wakened the Ren Sharingan. To be honest with you I'm surprised to actually see it exists. It's a different color from what's been told in the Ichiha archives, but there's no mistaking it. Naruto has the Ren Sharingan. The Third Eye of the Sage. Third Eye of the Sage. Hiruzen raised a brow. That's what the Ichiha clan called it during the time both Hashirama Senju and Madara Ichiha were still alive. 
Hokage sama I hope you don't think of me as being out of line for saying this but I believe Naruto may very well be the reincarnation of the Rikim Senen. Shisui gave the man a serious look. The old man's eyes widened at the proclamation. While true the Rikim Senen had a third eye just like Naruto does now, he'd always thought of the man to be nothing more but a legend. If what Shisui's saying is true then the boy might be the savior of the entire world. What makes you believe such a thing? Hiruzen asked. Shisui took a deep breath, during the time Madara Ichiha was still alive, there was a prophecy that sounded foreboding, but they took it to heart and took it seriously. What prophecy? Ons, Yasagi no Megami, Rabbit Goddess. Shisui said. Hiruzen's eyes widened in complete and utter shock. He remembered that when he was chosen to be the Sandame, Tabarama told him on complete secrecy of the prophecy that foretold of a goddess that was the first wielder of chakra. Ironically he overheard this when Madara and Hashirama were speaking to each other in private one day. Madara had mentioned it to Hashirama one day out of the blue, and ever since Tabarama had felt a sense of foreboding. Like this goddess would come down and strike at them. I remember Tabarama sensei mentioned it to me once out of the blue one day just like Madara had done to Hashirama. The rabbit goddess the mother of all Charka. Hiruzen fell back into his chair, so it's true then. Shisui nodded, yes. The members of the clan believed that one day the reincarnation of the Rikidm Senen would appear in a soul full of pureness and love, the third eye is the key to confinement, should it fail a new seal will appear to seal the goddess away forevermore. Hiruzen closed his eyes, Naruto he opened them very calmly, Shisui, do not mention this to any members of your clan. I'm sure Itachi will agree with me on this matter as well. Shisui nodded in agreement, understood. Where's Itachi now? The Hokage inquired. He's with Naruto and his new friend. Shisui said noticing the Hokage tense. Friend? Yes. A boy probably about the same age as Naruto, his skin is fairly pale, as is his hair, and he has the same eyes as those of the Haikta clan. Shisui informed. Are you saying he's a member of the Haikta clan? Hiruzen questioned. I'm not entirely sure he was cut off when Itachi materialized next to him. Itachi, great timing. Tell me of the boy that's with Naruto. Hiruzen asked. Sir. His name is Hizuki Utsutsuki. Itachi said. Utsutsuki the lost clan Hiruzen and Shisui at the same time. Itachi wasn't surprised that they knew about the clan, yes, he is of the Utsutsuki clan, while also possessing the Byakugan. I'm sure the members of the Haika clan will try to approach the boy at some point, but I don't think it will go very well. I agree with you completely in that regard. Anyway, I'm a little suspicious of this boy. I'm assigning Anbu Dog to watch their every move specifically this Hizuki Utsutsuki. Hiruzen sported a serious look on his face. Itachi thought about the boy god tree. I only trust one human and that is Naruto Uzumaki. If I sense he is in danger in any way from the humans of this village I will be the one to end humanity. The seriousness of his words are not to be taken lightly. Itachi thought. If the Shinju decided humanity was no longer trustworthy then it will be their end and the hope for their survival is Naruto. Naruto's apartment 845. Izuki had the blonde boy on his back as he carried him to his apartment. After Itachi left Hizuki observed Naruto as he continued to train with the Horatian, and so far he was making good progress. When the boy ate from the chakra fruit his chakra control improved, not only that, but he also gained enhanced strength and senses, even though the boy was oblivious to that fact. The god tree was still trying to figure out what still possessed him to call out to the boy, was it because he held the kickbee within him? Was it because the child was lonely and needed someone show him at least some sign of love and affection? Or was it at some point the Shinju itself was starting to seek companionship after being on this planet and witnessing nothing but bloodshed and hatred? The thought almost made it want to laugh if that was even possible. Giving Naruto a side glance and seeing his peaceful face for once made it actually feel something despite it not having experienced human emotions before in its entire life. If Naruto felt threatened then it would protect him, if Naruto felt sad then it would comfort him, it would seem that after meeting Naruto and communicating with the blonde made it actually feel something. Opening the apartment door Hazuki walked in and set Naruto down on the bed softly before pulling the covers over him. For a while he simply stared at his friend's sleeping face with interest. Is this what humans look like when they're at ease? If so then it's a very interesting expression that the god tree wanted to engrave within its memory. Crouching down on the floor the god tree leaned back into the bed and closed its eyes triggering sleep while at the same time staying alert. This is a village full of people who would love nothing more but kill Naruto for something he couldn't help, so it was only logical to protect the boy. And protect he will. That's it for today guys, I will stop here. That was first part of this series, hope you all enjoyed this video, if you do please leave a like share and subscribe. Also don't forget to check it author of this story. Also you can check it our other video too. Thanks for watching guys.